There's a treasure hunter stuck in jail right now because he won't disclose the location of some gold. Is this what's planned for Bitcoin? We are back from the U.S. Thanksgiving holiday. Uh, I hope everybody, uh, I hope everybody who is celebrating it had a great time and made some memories and did all that fun family stuff. Or if you just wanted to hang out and eat a whole bunch of turkey and you know have a turkey coma, then hey, so be it. To each their own. Anyways, anyways, let's dive into our story today. Treasure hunter stuck in jail for refusing to disclose location of gold coins faces judge. Ingot from shipwreck sells for $2.16 million. That's right. Okay. Okay. Let's dive into this one because this th this will definitely this will be getting used, right, by the um the the privacy proponents. Um, you know, to say, hey, you got to be careful with KYC Bitcoin, which there's absolutely no argument there, right? Because there is a tracking that takes place with know your customer protocols or AML protocols. So um, they're not wrong about that. Um, but anyways, let's dive into this article. Let's dive into this article. And, you know, we're going to we're going to have a little bit of a a little bit of a discussion about this. So research scientist Tommy Thompson has been held in contempt of court since December 15th, 2015 for that refusal. He is also incurring a daily fine of $1,000. Thompson's case dates to his discovery of the SS Central America, known as the Ship of Gold in 1988. The Gold Rush era ship sank in a hurricane off South Carolina in 1857 with thousands of pounds of gold abroad, distributing to an economic panic. Thompson has previously said without providing details that the coins valued at about 2.5 million were turned over to a trust in Belize. After a federal judge ordered Thompson in 2012 to appear in court to disclose the coin's whereabouts, Thompson fled to Florida where he lived with his longtime female companion at a hotel where he was living near Boca Raton. U.S. Marshals tracked him down and arrested him in early 2015. The ship sank in September 1857, along with 425 passengers and crew members and 30,000 pounds of federal gold from the new San Francisco Mint to create a reserve for banks in the eastern U.S. The ship was located by Thompson and his team in September of 1988, more than 7,000 feet below the surface. Before we dive into before we dive into this, um, we're, we're going to go and take a look at the original tweet storm that uh, that I found uh, this article in. It's from a fellow Bitcoiner, and here we go. Let's pull this up. Your government, no matter where you are, hates you. They can and will hold you in a cell indefinitely if they aren't able to get what they know or possibly even suspect you have. Here's what you can do about it. And this is at Kyle of the Corn. Okay. And let's go take a look over here. Where did it, this is where I got the original article, right? This, well, this is where I got the, the link for it. Okay. And here we go. This was on November 9th. Your lost in a boating accident will not hold any ground and you will be held in contempt of court until you break. Sorry, not sorry. Listen to those telling you to buy KYC free. Okay. And he cites this article, which we just went through as a, as a reason why uh, you should be concerned about know your customer protocols um, and specifically KYC Bitcoin. And what is KYC Bitcoin? Essentially, KYC Bitcoin is Bitcoin that is purchased on an exchange or in a manner that requires you to disclose personal information, such as your your first and last name, along with your address, possibly having to provide a passport, possibly having to provide a driver's license, okay? And what this does is, is that it links your quote unquote online identity to your in real life identity. And through doing so, it creates a, it creates a way to be able to track your in real life, essentially your in real life identity um, online and through your digital footprint. So anyways, 
Let's continue on. Let, let's continue on and see what Kyle. Uh, let's see what Kyle has to say because I, I do think he gives some good advice. So here we go. By acquiring Bitcoin via KYC free services via Bisc Network, RoboSats, or at Hodl Hodl or locally, you are not telling the government that you're purchasing Bitcoin. Yes, you'll pay a premium for it, and you'll be quite limited in the quantity you can purchase, but it's worth it. Even if you acquire all your Bitcoin via KYC free services, you could still you could still signal your interest by purchasing a hardware wallet. This is where at Seed Signer allows you to build your own signing device with regular commercial hardware, hiding your intentions, interest in Bitcoin. However, it's likely you already have a KYC stack, which is most likely correct, and you don't know what to do. Stop using KYC services. You don't have to delete those accounts just yet. That won't undo KYC anyways, but at least break the habit of using them as your primary method of acquiring Bitcoin. Okay, and here he dives in to give some, I think some pretty solid advice here. Take, take, take self-custody and run a node. Absolutely, that is you know, that, that is at the at the base of all of this, right? At the base of Bitcoin is freedom. And freedom does not come without personal responsibility. Part of that personal responsibility is self-custody. The other part is also running a node. And here, this is another good one, something that you don't hear too often. Um, and when I say that, it's because a, a lot of new people coming into Bitcoin don't. At, at first, I, it took me a long time before I even understood that there was something besides transactions. The underlying data that is the transactions are the UTXOs. Anyways, label your UTXOs. Sparrow Wallet is great for this and pairs well with Bitcoin Core locally. I've, I've always note the source for all received coins. The point here is so that you don't consolidate coins from different sources like spending KYC coins and KYC free coins together. Okay, and after that, he goes on to back up your seed, phrase, and steal, which, I mean, we've, we've gone through those basics. But the point of this, right, the point of this right now is to discuss KYC Bitcoin versus non-KYC Bitcoin. So before we get into that discussion, let's just understand what happened with the gold, okay? There is approximately two and a half to 3,000 tons of gold, okay, that is mined every year the amount that was the, the amount that is that, that, that was supposedly lost on that ship uh is is probably around 0.01% okay so it's it's completely negligible Be, because a, a lot of times people you know people like to come up with the narrative of oh look you know you just added to the supply of gold that's going to dilute the price anyways look gold has been manipulated for a very long time it, it doesn't even matter but but that's not the point of this i just wanted to put that into perspective so people understand how much gold that this really was um the the other piece the other piece is this gold gold is physical okay so it makes it a lot easier for a government to confiscate gold whereas with bitcoin it makes it much more difficult so i just want to i just want to put that out there um, another piece to this, which is where it gets very tricky people, right? Not everybody has the same intentions with Bitcoin. Some people are buying it so that fiat number go up and that way they can sell it for fiat. Okay. Now, whether you purchased KYC Bitcoin or non KYC Bitcoin, when you sell that Bitcoin, it now adds to your income. Don't get me wrong. Granted, you know, you may only sell $500 worth that that's not really going to get noticed. But let's say you decide to sell enough Bitcoin to, to buy a house and you purchased all this Bitcoin KYC free. So all of a sudden, you've got like, a, you know, maybe $200,000, $250,000 of, of fiat to, you know, that, that you just converted from Bitcoin to buy a house. Well, at that point, it has become income. And whether your Bitcoin was KYC free or not, that income, okay? That income is registered. You now have to explain where that income came from, and you are now going to have to pay income tax on that income. Okay. So the other piece to it, the other piece to it, unfortunately, is that there's a lot of people who come from legacy finance that are in, in Bitcoin. Okay. And they understand how the legacy system works. There's another side to this in Bitcoin where you have a, you know, some smaller groups of people uh, that possibly have never actually purchased a real world asset uh, before Bitcoin. So they've never owned a car 
they've they've never maybe owned a house. Um, they've maybe never even owned a, a motorcycle or something like that. You know, they they've maybe never owned land. So they they think that by purchasing KYC free Bitcoin, it all of a sudden hides everything. You know, you that's it. It was purchased KYC free. All I need to do is mask out all the ways that it goes out. But make no mistake, if you are converting that Bitcoin into fiat dollars to purchase large assets, such as homes, such as boats, such as land, this type of stuff, okay, is going to flag your income. And you are now going to have to prove your income. So in summary, okay, KYC free Bitcoin, there's nothing wrong with that. That's good. That's the way it should be. Our money should have stayed KYC free the way it was with cash. Okay. That shouldn't have happened. That is garbage from the banking system, which its only desire is control, control and power. And hence we have KYC. So make no mistake. KYC is a shit coin. The fact that we go through this is absolute bullshit. But what I don't want people to take away is this idea that if you just buy all this KYC free Bitcoin, that you are all of a sudden going to be immune entirely from the government's reach. You're not. If you're converting it into fiat and you are purchasing large assets, you are going to have to make a claim on your income. You are going to have to explain where that money came from.